is into some worship. Father, we want to say thank you that we can come together. Thank you for this sunshine this morning. And we just pray you'll bless this time together and that Jesus be exalted in our midst. Father, we welcome you, we praise you, and we want to worship you this morning from our hearts in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Rescued me, sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last meeting face to face I am yours Jesus you are mine and this joy perfect peace earthly pain finally will cease celebrate Jesus is alive he's alive and oh happy day happy day
Christ my all in all, the joy of my salvation. And this hope will never fail, cause heaven is our home. Through every storm, my soul will sing. Father God, this morning we just thank you that you are enough, Father, that you provide absolutely everything. And even in this time, Father God, you've been working inside each and every one of us, ministering to us, and just upskilling us in different ways. And Father, we just thank you for this glorious day this morning, that you have provided the weather for us to be able to do this, for us to meet, to gather as family, as fellowship. And Father God, we just lift this morning to you right now. Yeah, Jesus. Troubled sea, my life has. 
house, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. good we can have a saviour to trust in yes. take us through the storms take us through the difficulties the unknowns and he's always going before us that's great i want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who've taken part on the videos in these last several weeks because we ring you up and sort of say got anything that to contribute and many of you've come back with something to share and that's made the videos more enlightening more expanded but it's been great if you've all taken part and you've all shared and I just want to say a big thank you to all of you. Now this week, there's only the one house group and that's going to be on Wednesday night at half past seven. So you're welcome to plug into that. And that's, I think Delhi's going to lead that this week. So uh, that'll be great. So it'll be good to see you there. And um, we'd like to do more of these, but we're watching the weather and uh, we'll keep you in touch with what's going to happen for the future. All right, that's going to be great. I'm going to ask Henry now, he's going to come up and he's going to share the word. Thank you, Henry. If the children would like to go to the tent at the back, there's some provisions made there for you to do various things. Okay? Morning, church. Morning. I'll shake your hand and I'll give you a hug. Whichever one you like. Well, this morning, 
I've called my message lockdown. I wonder where I got that from. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this amazing opportunity to be able to preach out in the open air. That wherever my voice goes, that the word of God will be proclaimed. Lord, I thank you. I pray this morning that you'll bring to my remembrance those things in which you want me to say and remove the things that you don't want me to say. Lord, thank you, and I pray you'll bless this time we spend together in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I've come equipped, if my phone don't work because of the internet, I got me real Bible. And me real glasses. We're reading from Acts 16, starting at verse 16. Acts 16... Verse 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female servant who had a spirit which she could predict the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them to the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into uproar. They advocate customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowds joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with, rod, with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake, the foundations of the prison was shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and came to see the prison doors open. He drew his sword and I and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed the rooms, and immediately he and all his household were baptized. Praise be to God. We're in lockdown. And... Um, Paul and Silas were put in the inner cell because they had to be looked after carefully. They didn't want any escapes. They didn't want egg on their face, in other words. The, this is the magistrates. But let us not forget they had been beaten with rods. And I've been told the things I've learnt that when you're beaten with rods, it not only rips your skin, it actually bruises your bones. So it hurts. 
Not only were they beaten with rods, but they were severely flogged. So they were in quite a bit of discomfort, as you can imagine. And on top of that, they had their feet put in stocks. Not very comfortable. When you imagine you had bleeding wounds, bru bruised bones, you couldn't move around too much to get yourself comfortable because you were in on stocks. No. We could all think they could be excused for feeling sorry for themselves, or ouch, I'm hurting, or I'm sore, or this is uncomfortable, or whatever other words come to mind that you'd like to put there. But not Paul and Silas. I mean, I just want us to stop and just imagine this for a minute, that you've been beaten up and you're hurting severely. You're not having a pity party. At midnight, you decide to pray. Lord, help me. And then start singing choruses and hymns. It's a lesson for us in lockdown, isn't it? For all of us that's been a bit whingy and a bit self-indulgent. Would have been a lovely time. And I'm preaching to myself as much as anybody else to praise God and have extra time in prayer and worship. Seeking the Lord. But these men have been flogged and beaten. But they still decided to praise God. I've put here, Paul and Silas was in physical lockdown, but in spiritual loose. They let the spirit override their flesh. And they were thanking God, praising God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I love this outside, you know. The last time I preached outside was in the Triangle at Bude, and I was about 25 years old. But it's lovely. But Paul and Silas, they'd gone up beyond and above their situation. They were praising God. And it's proof that when you lose yourself in God, things change. The other prisoners was listening. And remember, they were thugs, thieves, murderers, rapists, child abusers, whatever they were. They were in prison. So they weren't good members of society. But the presence of God caught them. They were listening. And as that old place was engulfed in the presence of God, it changed the whole situation. A violent earthquake. The foundations of the prison were shaken. And do you know when I think of that, I think of when Jesus was on that cross. When that rock split open. See, when you're really sold out to God, really praising and worshipping God, things change. He can crack stones wide open. He can make prison doors fly open. He can make the chains on your ankles and your arms loose. Do you know the amazing thing about this? Not one of those prisoners escaped. It says nobody. And you'd have thought, if you were banged up in prison, in chains and shackles, and you were a right rascal, a horrible person, using my own words, a right rat bag, and you had a chance to do a run or you'd run. Even the hardest of people were in that jail. And they could have run. Nothing to stop them. The doors were open. Their chains had loose. Physically they were free. But it's obvious that the Holy Spirit was hovering and working in that place. You know, it's like that chorus we used to sing. The foulest offender who truly believes a pardon from Jesus. You know, these hardened men, criminals, were so in awe of God because of what was happening. And it's all because two men, two godly men, decided not to look at their physical state and their pain and their suffering, but they choose to praise God and glorify God. And it captivated all the people around them. 
And not forgetting these people were crooks, they were thieves, they were, they were in prison, they were baddies. How many people have we captivated over this lockdown? Possibly with attitude. I know we am allowed to go and meet and greet people. But my wife has had to go and do the shopping. As many others. I, I must be honest, I haven't been out too much. I've just been on the farm working, and Ali's been doing the running around. But it's about attitude. We had the right attitude in this lockdown. We've been able to change life, make a phone call, ring people up. How are you doing? Oh, I'm finding this tough. Can't go out, can't do nothing. Have we empathised with them or have we prayed for them and praised God? Turn the situation around. Again, just think of these men, Paul and Silas. They'd been beaten and flogged. They were physically hurting. They were in pain. And yet, they focused on God and changed the situation. Not only were all the prisoners mesmerized by the Holy Spirit and stayed put, but a whole family, a whole household, came to know the Lord through this. You imagine that jailer. He was told to keep these blokes safe and he put them in the inner cell. Using my own words, don't you let them out, mate. It's on your net. Keep them safe. And when he realized the chains had gone and the doors were open, he was about to kill himself because he knew he was up for it. And Paul said, hang on a minute. Don't hurt yourself, mate. We're all here. It's nearly unbelievable, isn't it? That all those criminals, crooks, baddies, murderers, whatever, the Holy Spirit had captivated them. And they didn't go anywhere. And then this jailer got the lights and he brought Paul and Silas out. And you just notice how he referred to them. Sirs. He respected them. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The same as every one of us got to do to be saved. It's to call and believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the salt and light of the earth. And then the jailer took them out. He bathed their wounds, cleaned them up a bit. And then they had a salvation party. You imagine all this happening. I really want us to get to understand this. These men didn't once feel any sorrow for themselves. They were just looking to the bigger picture, picture, to the glory of God. The jailer, it says he's a household. It doesn't tell us how many, but he could quite possibly have been married with a family. He could have had servants in the house. The whole household became Christian. The whole household. Isn't that amazing? These two godly men were beaten and flogged. They were obviously in physical pain. You cannot be any other. And yet they choose to go above that and deliver a message of salvation. And not only, you know, it's incredible, not only did they get saved that night, they got baptized. So they must have went somewhere and found some water and got baptized. Incredible, isn't it? I think it's a wonderful story. That in the pits of the pits of the pits, and I'm speaking to myself, Ali will tell you, I've had a, sometimes I could have felt a bit better or been a bit more cheerful. But you know, these men, they were in the pits of the pits, and yet they praised God, hallelujah. They weren't thinking about the shackles rubbing their ankles, and they were sitting on this rock and it wasn't comfortable. They decided in their spirits to give God glory. So I just want to leave a thought with us this morning. Are we living in amazing grace or are we in spiritual stocks? And only you can answer that and only I can answer that. But can I encourage you this morning that if you are in spiritual stocks, that when you go home, you can reread this story 
and get that spiritual freedom that no matter what, you can praise the Lord God Almighty and know a freedom in your spirit and be a blessing to those around you. And in closing, I just want to read a psalm. It's Psalm 107. Psalm 107, starting at verse 13. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through the bars of iron. A bit like he did for Paul and Silas. Whatever our situation this morning, and I know some are in difficult situations, but can we just lay it before the Lord and look at it as Paul and Silas did, as an opportunity to give God praise and glory and to see those impossibilities they might seem crack open as the foundations cracked in the prison doors in the chains. Father, I just thank you and praise you for your word. It's living, it's powerful, and it's active. And stories like Paul and Silas, Lord. And I don't know if stories is the right word because it did happen. It was truth. When they were bound, they chose to praise you. And there was a freedom. And Lord, as we're in lockdown and as we're coming out of lockdown, I just pray that we'll have and know and experience a greater spiritual freedom. That we can speak to situations, Lord, and see them tremble and crack before our eyes. And see the glory of God revealed. And Lord, I thank you. And I just pray a blessing on everyone here, Lord. And I thank you in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray that your word will go out and achieve what you want it to achieve. Your word tells us it never comes back empty and void. But it always goes out to achieve the reason you sent it. So, Lord, I thank you and praise you for this time and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you and God bless you all.
Sorry, Lord, for the thing. 